For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. Well, I want to welcome you to another edition of Behold the Man. And the man I want you to behold is the man, Christ Jesus. We're going to be studying God's Word for the next few minutes, and I want you to get your Bible, a pencil, a piece of paper, something you can write and take notes on so that you can look up these scriptures in their context. You can study these scriptures, look them up in different translations, check the words out in your concordance. If you enjoy studying God's Word, you will enjoy the next few minutes because we're going to look into God's Word concerning faith being the currency of the kingdom of God. Now the world standard has a girl, oh, the world standard has a gold standard. Now the kingdom of God has a faith standard. So we're going to look in the, to the standard of the kingdom of God. We're going to look into faith and I want you to start your thinking right so that you're not thinking I'm talking about the faith movement. I'm not talking about a fad or something that just comes along a, that a whim that we're going to have going for a while and then it's going to pass. That's not in accordance with God's Word. What we're talking about is a lifestyle. The Word of God says in the book of Romans and in the book of Habakkuk that the just shall live by faith. So we're talking about a living faith that is a lifestyle, not something we just do for a season, but that we do as children of God because God Himself commanded it. He set it up. We're going to start off by looking in Mark <coughs> chapter 11, verse 22. It says, And Jesus answering saith unto them, Have faith in God. So here's an order, a direct order to the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ, to His followers, to have faith in God. And the faith that He truly wants us to have is to have faith in God's faithfulness to keep His Word. Not that we have to try to muster up great faith, that we have to try to do something so that we're great men and women of faith, that we have strong faith, we have exceedingly great faith. Our faith will be strong, it will be exceedingly great, it will be all of the things we want it to be if we will know that our faith should be in God's faithfulness to keep His Word. When we believe that He will do what He said He would do, He went to great lengths to tell us that He's not a man, that He should lie, or the Son of Man, that He should repent, that He's the same yesterday, today, and forever, that there's not a shadow of turning or change in Him, that He's not a respecter of persons. If He did it for me, He'll do it for you. If He did it for you, He'll do it for me. He is not a respecter of persons. And when we look into His Word, we will find that God is not codependent to us, that He has done all of these things for us before we were here, before the foundations of the world, He put it in place. I want us to look in Ephesians, the book of Ephesians, chapter 2. We're going to read verses 8 through 10. We're going to look at them in the King James translation and also in the Amplified Bible in verse 10. But verse 8 says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. Now, this word in verse 8, it says, For by grace are you saved, through faith, and that not of yourselves. That word grace means favor. It's through God's favor, through the favor of the King that we receive salvation through our faith in the King, through our faith in His Word. The word saved there means to be made whole to be complete, to prosper, to be delivered, to, to be healed, to be at peace. So you can read that scripture and it says, well, how, how, how do we get prosperity in the kingdom of God? It says, for by grace are ye prospered through faith. We'll say, how do I get my healing? How, how do I do that? It says, for by grace, God's favor, are you healed 
through faith. Faith in what? Faith in God's word, faith in God's promises, faith in God himself to keep his word, to keep his promises. For the word of God says, with Jesus' stripes, we were healed. Not going to be. We were healed. It says we are healed. It's both said in the past tense and in the present tense, ad infinitum. Nowhere does it say that we will be healed. It says we are healed. So we're not trying to get God to heal us. We want the manifestation of the healing in our lives. How do we get the manifestation? It tells us right here, through faith. Now, in verse 10, we re read it in the Amplified Bible. You see, it says, For we are God's own handiwork, recreated in Christ Jesus, that we may do those good works which God predestined, planned beforehand for us, taking paths which He prearranged ahead of time, that we should walk in them, living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. He prearranged this. Before we were here, he had the arrangement for us to live the good life, not a good life. The reason he wants us to live the good life is because he is good and he is king, and a good king provides for his citizens, the citizens of his kingdom. Now, God will have no one, there is none good but God. He's certainly not going to have any king that is better than him. That's why it's not a good life, it is the good. It doesn't get any better than this. We're going to live and reign with God forever throughout all of eternity. He says, the citizens of my kingdom, I have raised them to the point that they themselves are king. That's why he's known as the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He is good. He is the best. He's the only one that's good. And there is no kingdom greater or better than the kingdom of God. Now, our challenge is believing this. Until we start to believe in his goodness, we won't walk the paths that he has planned for us to walk. See, it says here, read it again in the, in the King James Bible. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. He created us to do some work. Our work is to walk along the path doing the things that he has instructed us to do in his word. Well, how can we do the things that he instructed us to do if we don't know what he's told us to do in his word? And why would we look in his word to find out what he told us to do if we don't know him, if we don't trust him, if we don't have faith in him? That's why faith is not a movement. Faith is a lifestyle. Said the just, those that have been made right, have been declared innocent, shall live from faith to faith. You just take a baby step and you trust him for this and you see that he's faithful to keep his word. And you find another scripture and another promise that he has. And you put your faith in his faithfulness to keep that word. And you start confessing that word. And you see that he's faithful to keep that word. And then you will start to believe him for something even greater and even greater. Until you're walking as an adult child of God. Doing the things that he has told you to do. Having in manifestation the properties of the good life that you hope for. That's what it says in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. See those plans that he planned beforehand? Let's listen to those plans that he have for us. In Jeremiah 29, 11, it says, I alone know the plans I have for you, plans to bring you prosperity and not disaster, plans to bring about the future that you hope for. He's so good, he even put the hope in us. What the world does, and so what Satan tries to do through the world, is take those hopes and those dreams away from us by telling us, oh, you can never do it, you can never have it, you're not the right color, you're not the, you haven't been educated enough. They try to strip you of all hope because they're in the world with no hope and no God, and that's where we were. Until we came into the knowledge of God, we put faith in His Word, and now we're learning to trust in Him by getting to know Him through His Word. To where